Cat 2017 Cram, Critical Analysis and Reasoning Skills, Passage 31, Physical Education in the UK. As you view the reading of the passage, you'll notice some highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these specific selections to answer the foundations of comprehension, reasoning beyond the text, and reasoning within the text questions that follow. Good luck and happy reading. Paragraph 1. In the United Kingdom, physical education is compulsory in state schools until students reach the age of 16. That is, sports are compulsory for as long as formal education is mandated by law. Because there are many children who don't want to participate in PE classes, I believe that students should be allowed a choice if their parents agree, why should they be forced to jump on a trampoline or do calisthen cal calisthenics? Okay, I can't, can't get that word. PE class is different from other classes because it involves what one does with one's body. We acknowledge the right of individuals to control their own bodies to determine whether and when they have an operation to determine where they go and what they do. Why is this any different? Paragraph two. It is a red herring, red herring meaning misleading, to say that PE makes any serious difference to people's health. There are more effective ways of ensuring a healthy population than pushing children to run laps around a freezing sports field once a week. For example, schools could be addressing the poor diets young people have today and encouraging them to walk or bicycle to school rather than rely on a car. Paragraph 3. Furthermore, sports are a waste of school time and resources. One or two PE lessons a week may very, make very little difference to an individual's health, but they make a huge difference in a school's budget. Mandatory PE requires a whole extra department in schools, wasting a great deal of money and time that could be better spent on academics. It also requires schools to be surrounded by a large amount of land for playing fields, making it prohibitively expensive to build new schools in urban areas. Given the average current pupil-teacher ratios, the quality of teaching in PE classes is necessarily low, and classes may even be dangerous to students who are not properly supervised. Our children are burdened enough in schools already, especially at the older end of the system with multiple examinations. PE simply adds needlessly to the hectic schedule to this hectic Paragraph 4. Many people argue that playing team sports builds character, encourages students to work with others, teaches children how to win and lose with good grace, and builds strong school spirit through competition with other institutions. It, often, it is often, they say, the experience of playing on a team together which builds the strongest friendships at school. Friendships which endure for years afterwards. Many say the same benefits derive from the common endurance of prison. Whoa. Paragraph 5. Injuries sustained through school sport and the psychological trauma of being bullied for sporting an aptitude can make people, can mark people for years after they have left school. On that note, in an increasingly litigious age, a compulsory rather than voluntary sports program is a liability. More and more schools are avoiding team games such as rugby, soccer, hockey, and football due to the realistic fear of lawsuits. Teamwork can be better developed through music, drama, and community projects without the need to encourage an ultra-competitive ethos. Ethos meaning the characteristic spirit of a culture, era, or community as manifested in its beliefs and aspirations. Paragraph 6. 
As for the argument that without compulsory PE, many members of society wouldn't find out that they had a talent for a sport or even that they enjoyed it, students can discover this aptitude outside of school without also discovering the bullying and humiliation that comes with PE classes more than with other lessons. The aim of compulsory PE isn't being fulfilled at present in any case as sick notes are produced with alarming regularity by parents complicit in their children's wish to avoid it. Greater efforts to enforce it will only result in more deceit, children missing school for the entire day, or in the most extreme cases, children being withdrawn from state education. All right. The author's central theme for the whole passage is A. Opposing formal education mandates B. Describing the consequences of making PE compulsory C. Presenting reasons for why PE should not be compulsory or D. Advocating that PE be abolished in UK state schools I'll give you a moment to think All right. Okay, so this is a foundations of comprehension question, which means that it wants you to understand the central theme of the passage. And in order to do this successfully, you have to identify specific parts of the passage, such as thesis, examples, and counterexamples, okay? The author states that the current law in the United Kingdom makes PE compulsory in state schools for students under age 16, and then argues um, in the third sentence that, quote, students should be allowed a choice. This is mentioned in paragraph one, okay? The author describes the right of individuals to control their own bodies in other settings in order to argue for an exception from mandates for PE classes as well, also mentioned in paragraph one. So the author's main point is not opposing educational mandates or compulsory education in general, but only in the instance of PE. This makes answer choice A incorrect. Although um, the author describes a number of possible negative consequences of PE, this is not the central point. That makes answer choice B incorrect. This is just one of the larger arguments that PE should not be compulsory. All right, so obviously the correct answer choice is going to be answer choice C. And although the author argues that sports are wasting time and money um, in paragraph three, Many points in the third paragraph could be used to suggest that eliminating PE in sports altogether, um, but the author never explicitly advocates fully abolishing PE. <laughs> this sounds way too extreme. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, the answer choice D is basically wrong. I'm not even going to continue. All right, on to the next one. Which of the following assumptions is made by the author in relation to the argument about students' hectic schedules? Is it A, PE tends not to have a final examination? Is it B, PE tends not to have a heavy homework burden? Is it C, compulsory PE, if eliminated, would not be replaced by another compulsory course? Or is it D, it is unfair to require students in the higher grades to prepare for multiple examinations. I'll give you a moment to think. Okay, so this is a reasoning beyond the text question that wants you to basically apply the ideas mentioned in the passage to the um, new situations presented in the answer choices. 
So you have to understand the assumptions underlying the article and assess how the new information in the answers shifts the central thesis. Okay. The author describes the busy schedules of students and argues for elimination of PE to help alleviate um, that burden. This is mentioned in paragraph three. This would only be true if PE was not replaced by another compulsory course uh, with a similar amount of work involved. Okay, so the correct answer choice is going to be obviously answer choice C. The fact that PE tends to not have a final examination and does not have a heavy homework burden suggests that PE might be relatively less likely to cause additional stress for a student relative to another class. So this is um, antithetical to hectic schedules actually. And as, as for answer choice D, there are, these are not a part of the author's assumptions. The point about requiring students in higher grades to prepare for um, multiple examinations is, is not necessarily addressed by the author, okay? So yeah, it's C. Assume it's true that students are more likely to obtain specialist coaching at sports club outside of school than in school. How would this information be relevant to the passage? A, it would restate an objection to compulsory physical education um, classes. B, it would support a point about discovering sports aptitude made in rebuttal. C, it would directly challenge one of the author's claims. Or D it would contradict one of the author's examples. Okay, this one can be a little tough. Not necessarily because it's difficult, but it's time consuming. You have to go back and check. So I'll give you a moment to think and definitely press pause if you need to. All right. Okay, so this is a reasoning beyond the text question. It wants you to apply the ideas mentioned in the passage again um, to this new situation in the question stem. The author writes, <clears throat> excuse me, quote, as for the argument that without compulsory PE, many members of society wouldn't find out that they had a talent for sport or that they even enjoyed it, students can discover this aptitude outside of school without also discovering the bullying and humiliation that comes with PE classes more than with other lessons. This is mentioned in paragraph six. The author is offering basically a rebuttal, okay? So the correct answer choice is answer choice B. The rebuttal is to the argument that students have no alternative to finding a talent for sports in school settings. If it is true that students are obtaining specialist coaching at sports clubs outside of school more than often more often than in school, then it would further support this point that was made in rebuttal. The fact would be more than a simple restatement of an objection, which is what answer choice A is trying to say. So that's wrong. And the reason why is because it would actually serve as a clear example that supports a point that is already made. So this fact would not challenge um, the author's claims. So answer Tracy is wrong, nor would it con contradict any of the author's examples. So answer Tracy is wrong. Overall, the correct answer is answer choice C. I mean, B. All right. What is the function of the statement in the first paragraph that PE class is different from other classes? Is it A, it is a part of an argument why PE classes should be required? B, it explains why students should only be exempt from PE with parental permission? 
For C, it explains why students should have a choice about whether to take PE while not having a choice about taking other compulsory classes. I'll give you a moment to think. All right, so let's straight up the correct answer choice. It's answer choice C for obvious reasons. This is a reasoning within a text question, which means that it wants you to explore um, an indicated claim expressed in the passage. You have to evaluate uh, this generalization in light of the answer choices. The author doesn't state that PE class um, is different as a reason why it should be mandatory. Okay, that's a no. Let's see what else. On the contrary, the author is asserting that students should have a choice because P class is different. The passage states, quote, I believe that students should be allowed a choice. P class is different from other classes because it involves what, one's, what one does with one's body. You can find this mentioned in paragraph one. The author frames a philosophical question of choice around physical education, but does not believe that this choice extends to other classes that do primarily, that don't primarily um, affect the human body. So that's why the correct answer choice is answer choice C. Um, the author dismisses the claim that PE Well, actually, no, he does. The author is not using the statement to argue why parental permission might be necessary. This is a little mis like it's kind of sort of misleading, and I can see why some people reading through the test would choose this if they never saw this. Okay, but on a superlative scale, answer choice C is the most correct in this instance. All right. Okay.